Tuesday, it can mean only one thing. It's time for the Statsmaster. There he is, the stats master. He's looking mean, and it's because up until a few moments ago, we thought probably the most famous anorak in the game had been stolen. Where was it, Ray? I was very worried, actually. I thought autograph hunters must have uh, pinched it from the dungeon, but uh, apparently it was hidden in one of the boxes. Yeah. Do you get troubled by people at matches just trying to nick your clothes? Absolutely. They try and reach out and touch me and want autographs. And uh, I mean, I do a few dozen, but I mean, it can get a bit monotonous at times. Yeah, I thought you were looking a bit tired. OK, it's uh, a West Ham opponent today. Uh, the man who wrote this book, An Irrational Hatred of Luton, a West Ham fan story, Robert Banks. Hi, Robert. Hello, Jeremy. I feel Please as though I know you, having read, read <laughs> this story. Now, let me just ask you about who's this on the cover? Because of, uh, <coughs> there's, there's about 20 different women you get through in your book, but uh, not this one. She is not um, anyone who appears in the book. She's no. actually one of the girls who sells Hammers News oh, uh, right. on, a, on a match day. I, and kept, uh, I kept thinking that I'd <coughs> find out who she was, but I never did when I got to the end. You've probably bought a copy of Hammers News from her. I probably have. Mm. Yeah. Get my copy free because I'm pressed. No, I don't. I have to buy I it. Don't. I have to buy it now. <laughs> Up until last season, I used to get it free, but now I'm a season ticket holder. I have to buy it. But who cares? Because the good thing about being season double, you can shout, can't you? Absolutely. In the press box, I used to look at me when I used to shout. I've had that problem. Yeah. OK, it's uh, West Ham 85-86. Ray, do you know anything at all about the Hammers? Yeah, they had a good season that season. They finished third that year, I believe. Very good season for West Ham. Best ever season. Mm. Right, your first question. What was unusual about Alvin Martin's hat-trick against Newcastle in the league on the 21st of April? Oh, that's the one that's in all the record books, because he scored a hat-trick against three different goalkeepers. Um, yeah. Beardsley was one, in fact, wasn't he? Yeah, do you know the others? Doesn't matter. Uh, Thomas. Thomas. I can't think of the other one. And uh, Heads, Headworth, Chris Headworth. Oh. Challenge your first question. West Ham met two clubs on five occasions each that season in the League and Cup competitions. Who were the two? Uh, Manchester United. Yeah. And Ipswich Town. And Ipswich Town, yeah. Twice in the League, three times in the FA Cup. And United twice in the League, twice in the FA Cup. And once in the League Cup. Stats Master, who finished top scorer in the League Cup for the Hammers with three goals? Ray Stewart, was there all penalties? Probably. Anyways, Ray Stewart. Yeah. Fancy a defender being our top scorer from the penalty spot. That wouldn't happen this season, would it? No, never. Challenger, Frank McAvenny missed only uh, one game in all competitions that season. The match was the home game against West Brom on the 30th of November. What was his reason for not playing? Uh, he was on international duty with Scotland in Australia. Yeah, preparing for the World Cup playoff match in Melbourne. Stats Master, the Hammers managed only one win in their opening seven league games. Who was that victory against? That was against um, fellow London side, Queen's Park Rangers. Yep, 3-1 on the 20th of August. It was amazing, really, wasn't it? They had such a poor start and went on to do so well. Yeah, if we'd done a bit better early on, who knows? We'd have won it. Uh, challenger, who were the two scorers in West Ham's 2-0 FA Cup fifth round replay victory against Manchester United at Old Trafford on the 9th of March? Uh, Jeff Pike, yep. with a header from the halfway line. Mm. And Ray Stewart, penalty. Yeah. I thought he was unfairly treated, Jeff Pike, towards the end, didn't you? No. <coughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Stats Master, who appeared in the first game of the season away to Birmingham and didn't play again until the fourth round FA Cup draw with Ipswich on the 25th of January? Um, Paul Goddard. Paul Goddard, yeah. 100% for everyone so far. Challenger, West Ham lost only two games at home in the league. Can you name the sides that inflicted these defeats? Um, Chelsea. Chelsea. And my favourite, Luton Town. Your favourite team, Luton Town. Just explain to the viewers why you don't like Luton. Um, well, there are 16 or 20 reasons. Um, plastic pitch, banning away fans. Uh, well, they beat us quite a lot, which... Um, they did. They always used to beat us in cups and things. They beat us at home and we could only draw them away and uh, that really ruined it for us that season. So. Yeah, OK. But having, bear in mind you've got 16 to 20 reasons. Why do you call it any rational hatred of Luke? Because it sounds like you've, you've really thought it quite through quite well. It's fairly well, I rational. I think to most people it probably appears irrational. It's only yeah. if, you're a, if you're a West Ham supporter that you perhaps... Uh, yeah. OK. For all, Ray, you, you're in trouble. Ooh. thought this one was going to be tough somehow. Uh, yes. Right. George Harris made 26 league appearances, including three as a substitute. He scored one goal. Who was it against?
Um, was it West Brom at Albion? West Brom at home on the 30th of November. The Hammers won 4-0. You were up against the ropes then, weren't oh, you? Absolutely, it was an odd one. OK, Challenger. West Ham played a total of 10 matches in the FA Cup and the League Cup that season. They were drawn against a London club on only one occasion. Who were the London club? Charlton Athletic. Charlton Athletic. That was in the third round of the FA Cup. So for the first time ever, it's five all after the normal round of questions. Now you have a question each to each other. First of all, Ray, your question to the challenger. Hello, Robert. I've got a question for you. Uh, West Ham was actually trailing only three times that season at half time. Who were those three opponents? Is this home and away, or uh, well, throughout the league, throughout the league campaign, uh, the league campaign, trailing at half time and, and went on to win, or just trailing at half time? Just trailing at half time. Just three times they was trailing at half time that season. Right. <clears throat> Oxford United. That's one. Go on, Robert. The whole country is behind you. <clears throat> Exciting, isn't it? Need two more teams, Oxford Swan. This is when, when they went on to win, yeah? Training no, at half time. No, it's just, just trailing at half time. Just three times they were trailing at half time. Oxford Nottingham Swan. Forest. No. 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 Everton and Manchester United. Right, and only Everton was the team to beat them after, you know, after winning at half time or leading at half time. Right. Okay. Your question to the stats master. Okay. Um, which three players made the fewest league starts? Fewest league starts. Uh, we could be going through a tiebreaker for uh, only the second time in stats master history. I should imagine Paul Goddard would have been one because he, I think he only played the uh, one, one or two games. Uh, was was there a guy called uh, Campbell? Uh, yep. Did he, did he? And there was one other one, wasn't there? Um, Is he right so far with those two? That's, that's correct. Yeah. Ooh! So to win it, you just got to pluck a name from nowhere. Probably the hood of your anorak, I would think. <laughs> might be a good place to look. I know West Ham used 18 players that season, and there was one other guy that just made one or two appearances. I'm trying to think of that guy's name. I'm sure it began with a H, but. Um, I can't remember his name. No, I think it began with a H, but uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. No. Does Paul, it? Paul Hilton. Oh. Paul Hilton. Paul Hilton. You've stayed at his hotel a number of times, haven't you? Because <laughs> you couldn't get his name. So it's gone to the tie break. First person to shout in with this. In which month was John Lyle the Bell's manager of the month? November. November is correct. Whoa! Robert, you were so close. Very well done. Thank you. So close to be the first person to take the... Cause you, does, he, does he get your anorak if he wins? No. He can touch it. He can touch, <laughs> he can your, touch your anorak. <laughs> well done, Ray. That was real pressure, wasn't it? No, no. Oh, okay. another one like that. Uh, memo to the producer. Anorak needs dry cleaning. He was under a bit of pressure there. Uh, <laughs> Excellent stuff. You got a busy week ahead then, Ravi? Uh, yeah, I've got a busy week. I've still got some more work to do for uh, Littlewoods, and um, I've got a screen test coming up for Channel Five program in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, because mm. they start, I think, on April the first, and my appearance is due for April the twelfth. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd have had, see, if I was doing the schedules, I'd have had you April the first. Well, because people are going to look at it and just think, no, it must be a joke, surely. No, April the twelfth, Saturday yeah. morning, April the twelfth. Right, and you're doing like similar sort of things? Uh, I believe so, yes. It's a general interview and then people from the audience are going to try and beat me on uh, questions. Just beat you to a pulp? Try it, though. Brilliant. That's a really good programme. <laughs> Robert, you're going to have to come back and try them on another season. I'd be delighted. Yeah. 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 What season, what would be another season that you could do him on? Um, I don't know. Perhaps the following season when we didn't do so well. Shocking, know. the following season. Shocking, absolutely yeah. terrible. And have been sort of ever since. Really? OK, well done, uh, Robert. Still to come on the programme, our phone-in. Will British clubs succeed in Europe this week? Can Newcastle turn it round?